Hi! Welcome to the sketch series. This entry is part of Philippine or local architecture. Have you been to National Museum of Fine Arts? Well, did you know that the building is intended to be a national library based on Daniel Burnham's grand plan for Manila? Just a backstory, Philippines became under American colonization after the Spanish-American War in 1898. Years after that, the U.S. government commissioned Daniel Burnham, an American architect and the city planner, to design a plan for Manila and Baguio. One of his plans is to make government and civic center readily accessible to public spaces. He believed that civic center would potentially improve the behavior of urban population. One of the examples of this based on his plan is the National Library, but turns out to be the legislative building during that time, or what we know now the National Museum of Fine Arts. Before leaving the Philippines, Burnham selected American architect William Parson to be responsible in handling the design. Remember architect Antonio Toledo from the previous video? Together with American architect Ralph Doan, they originally designed the future National Library building. The construction started in 1918, but it delayed several times because of the funding. Architect Juan Arellano revised the interior layout of the building when the Philippine legislature decided to move and accommodate it. That is why it is called the Legislative Building rather than the National Library. This neoclassical building is completed in 1926. Both the National Library and the Legislature houses the building. The library is located at the ground level while the Senate and the House of Representatives occupies the second floor and third floor. Inside the building is a three-story session hall with grand columns. The sculptural works surrounding the halls are made by our own Filipino sculptors. The column and pilasters are Corinthian in order and seen all over the building. The entrance is two-story high with four-column portico. This element is imitated by both end wing with just two columns. Over the entrance is a triangular pediment with a sculpture representing Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, law, education, commerce, and agriculture. This is also where Manuel Quezon, the second president of the Philippines, was inaugurated in 1935. During the war between Japanese and Americans, Japanese made the legislative building their headquarters. Because of that war, a big portion of Manila is affected by the bombing, including buildings and lives of people. The only thing that's left in the legislative building is the central portion with the triangular pediment. After the American won over the Japanese, the American paid the Philippines for the destruction they made and for the reconstruction of the building. The legislative building is reconstructed in 1949, but they didn't follow the original plan. The colonnade facade were changed by less ornate pilasters. Even the sculpture and details at the entrance of the building were also not followed. But it is not questionable for a country that is recovering that time. From its former name legislative building, it became Congress, Republic of the Philippines. A lot of things happen after that, but now it is called the National Museum of Fine Arts. If you have been to this museum, you may have already seen the spectacular Spolarium of Juan Luna and other works made by our Filipino artists. That's it! If you want to know further about the topic, you can check the links that I provided on the description box below. I just wanted to thank all the people that supported me through this channel. Let's also support other local YouTuber or artists. I hope you get inspired, entertained, and learned something. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting facts and other videos. And to be notified, just click the bell button. 
Thank you for watching. Let's all remember, practice makes progress.